We're going to watch Sammy himself. Uh, got up, got my butt up this morning, went out to Jefferson High School. Um, at the end of practice, Sammy is running uh, track right now, so he's not really practicing. You're going to hear us talk about that. Um, but I spent about three minutes with Sammy, and uh, if you haven't watched this, it was originally debuting on Dogs Daily uh, today, uh, about 10 o'clock this morning when I got home and released the article. But I figured, hey, why not? We got a massive YouTube audience. Why not let you guys see it now? Sammy Brown. Brown just wrapped up, what, second day, second second day, of, day of spring, spring practice, practice here for you? But you're in the middle of track mm -hmm. or track season right now, mm -hmm. right? So not really a full go for you this spring. But what are the track times looking like this spring for you? Uh, my fastest 100 right now is a 10.80. I'm trying to get down 10.7, maybe even a high 10.6. So um, we'll see what happens. We got sectionals this Saturday, and it should be really, really competitive. I think your brother Max told me you ran that 10.8 in, like, the freezing cold it rain. It was cold and wet and... It was bad. It was, it was like 30 degree weather, weather yeah, and you're out there bad. running 10 eights. But you've been running probably like 10 five, 10 six in practice. Is that what you think you might end up laying down this spring? Uh, I hope so. Um, the school record is 10 five, five set by Malachi. And you know, I'm coming for that either this year or next year for on track. So that's that's the goal. That's what I'm going after. We'll see what happens. All right, well, we don't have much time. Let's talk football right quick. Just a couple of schools. Let's hammer out. Who, who, who's been talking to you the most? Who, as the recruitment narrows down for you, who are you kind of looking at closely right now? Um, I've kind of narrowed it down to five, Tennessee, Clemson, Georgia, Oklahoma, and Ohio State. That's kind of – that's the officials I have set right now. So that's kind of the five I've been focusing on. All right, so big summer coming up for you with those five schools. Let's talk about Georgia in particular. How's that relationship been going? Um, that's probably one of my best relationships. You know, Coach Schumann, uh, Georgia offered me um, my spring of my freshman year. So I've been talking to Coach Schumann for almost two and a half years now. And so – that's just been a really good relationship to have and just keep building. And he's a really good guy and a really good coach. I think he's eight for eight. The last eight football players that have played for him at the inside linebacker position at Georgia have gone on to the league and played in the NFL. When you see that type of success, particularly in the draft, what what, what do you think about that? What, I think that just speaks volumes of the coaches, not only Coach Schumann, but the whole defensive staff, just bringing in these very talented players and then develop, developing them to go out and go into the draft, like you said. Let's talk a little bit about Clemson. What's that been like over there with those guys? Um, I, it's a really another really strong relationship. Coach Goodwin and um, Coach Sweeney have been there. I mean, even before I got the offer, it's just been a really strong relationship with them. They've got a really good culture, and they've always been historically good on defense. It's a little interesting for them with their recruiting strategy. They kind of offer late, mm -hmm. you know, but they, they show interest uh, obviously early in your recruitment. Does that matter to you when you get the Clemson offer because you know they like you anyways? Um, no, it doesn't really matter to me. It's just kind of them upholding their own standard of not offering too early just in case something happens. But, you know, like you said, they've, they show interest. It's not like they don't show interest or anything. It's just the matter of getting that offer later. Absolutely. Let's talk about the volunteers real quick. How, how have they been managing to sneak into this recruitment? Not necessarily sneak into it, but, you know, not necessarily one of the recruiting powerhouses for a, a top 20 player um i think i think the biggest thing about them is just how much they've been able to turn around in the past two three years with coach hypo coming in he's just really he's done a great job of turning that culture around and and developing that into a really really good good school who's been handling your recruitment from the tennessee's end? uh coach bj and then um i've talked coach hypo a lot too good man you, you're looking forward to one of your dates just last question um we the last week Weekend in May is Tennessee, and then Clemson, first of June, Georgia, the second week of June, Oklahoma, third week, and Ohio State, the last. And week. trying to have everything wrapped up by the time senior year starts. Mm, I think I think kind of the first week of July is what I'm shooting for, just yeah. to get it over with and focus on that senior year, like you said. Absolutely, man. Hey, you know what? We're learning. He's out here. Talking with the mic muted. Um, there you have it from Sammy Brown himself. Going to uh, probably come off the board first weekend of July. Um, we talked to him about those three schools, Georgia, Clemson, and Tennessee. And from everything I kind of gather about the recruitment, that's kind of where it is with Tennessee kind of standing on, you know, deck and a, a major battle going on right now between Georgia and Clemson. And I always like to learn about football players when I go to these events or when I go to practices and things like that. Uh, didn't get to see Sammy actually practice today um, in terms of like hit or get hit because he's in the middle of trying to win a state title and track. So didn't get to see him do anything really other than like routes on air and team on air. So Sammy and I don't know if Jefferson did this on purpose. I mean, it was the second day of practice. They might have been doing team O and team D on air anyways. But about a, I would say a third of the practice was on air just so Sammy could get reps because Sammy's kind of like the – I mean, he's the offense. Like, you know, he's the offense and the defense kind of because he's a top 30 player in the country. So, 
Um, it, I always learn about these football players. The, the thing that I learned, obviously, about Sammy wasn't watching him today. It was talking to his brother, Max Brown. Um, Max is an eighth grader. He's probably, I mean, he'll be, he'll be what Sammy is in terms of a recruitment. I, I'm, you know, breaking news. Max Brown's going to be a five star. Okay. From Jefferson high school. He's already about six foot, six foot one. Um, don't know if he's going to play inside linebacker or safety. Don't know what it's going to be. Tremendous athlete. Okay. Even what Sammy is, Max might be a better mover overall. Maybe not the linear prospect that Sammy is, but nonetheless, um, was talking to Max and was just like, Hey man, who is this guy? What's he about? All right. Who is your brother essentially? Um, and the answers I got were this, this is by nature is an introvert. Okay. Sammy Brown by nature is a guy that prioritizes football, um, lifting weights, eating right and Minecraft. That's about it. All right. Ain't no nonsense. Ain't no outsides. Ain't no nothing. Uh, it's just that. Um, so when I hear things like that, I think of three schools. I think of Clemson, Georgia, and Alabama, and he ain't really interested in Alabama. So those are kind of the reasons why I think it's narrowed down to that. Um, as far as the football player of Sammy Brown, I always like to tell you what my preconceived notions are on a football player. Um, I think it's it's it, it behooves you as an audience member to know what I think of a football player before we even get into a film or before we get, even get into a new evaluation because that's what this is. I have known about Sammy just like George has known about Sammy since he was a freshman in high school. Okay, he is now entering his senior year of high school, and guess what? The football player is completely developed. So what are my preconceived notions about Sammy Brown before we get into the film and before I tell you what I saw today? Okay, my preconceived notions of Sammy is that he is exactly that. He was a linear – he is a linear athlete. Okay, that was my preconceived notion. That's what I thought before I watched or went back and rewatched the film um, today after seeing him today. Uh, what does that mean? What is a linear athlete? I think at, before, again, I thought Sammy's best ability, and I still kind of do, Sammy's best ability is to go from point A to point B probably faster and quicker than any human at his size. He's a full 6'3", he's a full 230 pounds, and he's got long-ass arms. I think they're 83 and a half inches, Okay. So he is as big, tall, and long as humans can possibly be at his size, and he runs 10 to 8 in the 100 in 30-degree weather and driving rain. That's this human being, okay? Um, so those are my preconceived notions of him. And then when you go to watch the tape, things kind of change, okay? So what do I want to see for my opinions of a linear athlete to change? My opinions of his best abilities are to do this. I want to see him do this, right? I know he can do this. The track times tell me that. The 40 times tell me that. Hell, the vertical leaps tell me that. The squats tell me that we are great doing this and we are great doing this. But where, where's all this? Where's all this stuff that is required to nowadays play the linebacker position? Well, let's go find it, right? Let's go look for it in the film right meow, all right? We got the saying around here, shut up. Let's grind the tape. I'm going to put it in this setting. So what I have gone, this, is, this originally is an 11-minute highlight tape from Sammy Brown. I have gone through and cut out all of the linear plays, right? All of the plays where he takes the ball, runs through seven defenders, and then sticks his foot in the gas and takes it 80. I've taken them out of the film, all right? So we're going to watch Sammy Brown be an athlete today, and we're going to change our preconceived notions of a linear athlete, all right? So we are looking for change of direction uh, and lateral ability, like this right here. Hey, can we go from a stopped position to a really, really fast position really, really quickly? Boom. That's lateral mobility, right? I told you he's a linear athlete. We're looking for lateral ability today on the film. All right. Same thing here. All right. We 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 see, we fill hole and B gap, right? We see and fill hole and B gap. Now, running back is extending play to sideline. Can we open our hips, run laterally down the line of scrimmage, and pursue and arrive with violence? Well, let's take a look. Boom. There it is, right? Checks the box. All right, same thing here. Can we read? Can we key? Can we shed blocks? Get lateral, arrive with violence. Boom. There it is. We talk about the number one, in my opinion, the number one prerequisite for being able to play on first and second down in college football nowadays. Are you a sideline to sideline linebacker? Can you cover 53 and a half? That's what we just watched. I put this, I, I left this clip on the highlights um, because it shows me you're a football player. I think one of the 
more interesting possibilities for Sammy, for me, honestly, is to allow him to be the linear athlete. We'll talk about it a little bit later. Allow him to just run and catch footballs because I think he attacks the ball really, really well. Um, I also notice, hey, look at this big old brace on his right ankle and look at the gait, right? The, the motion of his running uh, uh, stride. Watch the gait change right here. This is obviously a football player that is playing through injury. This is a tough bastard. Or bastard's the wrong word. This is a tough SOB, okay? Um, this is a guy that plays football and plays football hurt, plays football banged up, does all that time, does all that stuff. Two-time state champion and wrestler. Now, this, 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 this. This might as well end the eval, end the questions, do all that good stuff for you if you're a person like me that questions the lateral ability of this athlete, right? And again, guys, we're talking about the difference between is he a top 32 player or is he a top five player? Because I think the top 32 is the ceiling or the floor of this player. The top five is the ceiling of this player. That's what we're trying to dis the, the, uh, differentiate tonight. Not whether or not this guy's a take. Every player, every country, every program in the country should want this player. That is not the discussion. The discussion is, are we taking him with the 15th overall pick or are we taking him with the sixth, right? Okay, this right here, reevaluate. Right. Go back. Change what you think about the athlete. Change what you think about the position player. He's going to open right now. He's going to flip his hips, come back towards the camera. Right. Locate the number two receiver. OK. Rotate with them. Keep hands on. Now locate the football. Disrupt the play. Dislodge the football. Create a turnover. Now I'm going to replay this because as I went back and as I'm watching him walk off like a stealth uh, ninja. OK. I see a Georgia player here. All right, and here's why. I've watched N'Kobe Dean for years make tremendous football plays. I've seen Smile Mondon make tremendous football plays. Jamon Dumas Johnson make tremendous football plays. And every single time, they do this. They do this stone-cold killer, just jog off the field, the job is done, on to the next play type of mentality. Like, there is no celebrations. There are no, no nothings. The highest levels of energy are coming from his teammates. Uh, during plays in which he's made the play, right? It's just robotic in his efforts, robotic in his minds, or robotic in his uh, movements, rather. It's a clip of him bending the edge right there. I, I think there is some general stiffness, okay, when we get to positions like this, right? If I showed you the, the, the end zone cut of this uh, image, he is not quite leaned at a position of an edge rusher, right? Again, this is, to me, a linear athlete. He is best when he is his ability is to stand tall and be explosive and get after it. Okay. Mm, that's this was this was the other thing. Hey, change the direction and will you be able to play Mike or will we have to play you with Willie? I right now think he's gonna come into Georgia or wherever he goes, Clemson. I, I this is not me tipping a pick, by the way, guys. I don't know where this kid's going. He don't know where he's going. I do not know where this kid's going. But if you come to Georgia and you're going to play Mike, you better be able to shed blocks, right? You better be able to strike with the butt of your helmet, with the screws of your helmet, and shed blocks. Check this out right here. This is what we're talking about. Strike with the, with the butt of your helmet. Boom. Strike with the butt of your helmet. Press out. Shed the block, okay? And then get in violent again on the tackle. That's what it looks like. That's what playing linebacker in the SEC nowadays looks like. And we can take that from his high school clips. I also think this is a relatively instinctual football player. Okay, I showed you clips of the spring game of Jamon, or not Jamon Dumas Johnson, Raylan Wilson kind of getting beaten by this Dover route, right? Getting sucked in by the run right here, just like Sammy's doing. But this is the elite athleticism, right? The ball has yet to be thrown. He locks on, he locks eyes on the Dover that he might have been a little closer or should have been a little bit closer to um, originally. Maybe he shouldn't have bitten down on the play fake. But nonetheless, the wherewithal to turn his head around, find the deep over, locate it, and then pursue it and knock the ball out, that's a football play, right? It's a five-star football play from a five-star football player, and that's an instinctual play from a five-star football player. I think the ball skills are really, really good. I do. I think the ball skills are really, really good. Um, I don't know. I don't really have a player comp. Um I, the, the, I've seen Drew Sanders. Drew Sanders is way too easy of a player comp for me. Um, I was thinking maybe like a Quay Walker because he is a bit knee-knocked, okay? Um, 
and that's okay. There's there's great linebackers that are knee knock. Quay Walker is a knee knock linebacker, right? His knees are inward. Okay, if you look at his his knees, they sit like this. They do not sit like this. Okay, um, what does it mean? Nothing. Doesn't mean anything. It means they have to win in different ways. Um, and Quay Walker's been able to do that. Um, so these bigger, longer, taller, rangier inside linebackers, they kind of are of today's mold. That's what people are now moving toward, um, not only in the NFL, but in the college ranks too. Um, so, yeah, that dude, that's a guy. All right. Um, what I don't know is where he's going to play. I don't know if he's an inside linebacker or an outside linebacker. Um, for me, for my money, if you are six foot three and above, if you are 235 pounds and above when you're 17 years old, we better figure out how to rush the quarterback. You know what I mean? We better figure out how to rush the quarterback and get after it because there's no telling. Sammy Brown might be 255. He might be 252. He might be 260. What I, I don't know. We don't know. We don't know what the ultimate inclination of that human being is going to look like. Um, but you would imagine he's only going to get bigger. And he's about as big as inside linebackers come right now. Um, and like I was telling you, I think his best trait, he is as big, tall, and as twitchy as any human I've evaluated at that size. 6'3", 235 pounds, running 10'8 in the rain. That's stupid. That doesn't make sense. Squatting 600 pounds, uh, power cleaning 385, like, these things are not metrics that normal human beings walk around with. Um, I'd put his hand in the dirt. I'd say all you got to do is get to that quarterback's back hip as fast as possible. And if you do it four times today, you're going to make a hundred million dollars. That's what I would do. Um, for Brooks Austin for the Film Guy Network, we'll see you Thursday. Don't know what we're going to talk about, um, but we'll have something for you. I love you. We'll see you next time.